Welcome back to the SAN Science Experience, where we explore the most exciting new research papers and preprints just for you. And hey, before we get started today, could you do us a quick favor? Please like this deep dive and subscribe to the SAN Science Experience right now. It really, really helps us out and lets us keep bringing you this kind of cutting edge science. So today we are diving deep into alpha genome. It's this, uh, frankly, incredible new AI model from Google DeepMind. Our mission basically is to unpack how it works, how it deciphers the genome's kind of hidden regulatory code, and crucially, how it predicts the impact of genetic variants. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. It's tackling some really fundamental challenges in genomics. That's right. Things people have struggled with for a while. Exactly. What's, uh, what's really cool here is how Alpha Genome just changes the game for deep learning in genomics. See, before this, models had this um, this tough trade-off. You could process really long DNA sequences, right? Mm -hmm. Which is great for context, but you'd lose the fine details, the single base pair stuff. Okay, so you see the big picture but miss the specifics. Precisely. Or you could go the other way, get super high resolution, like down to the single base pair. Yeah. But then you could only look at really short bits of DNA, missing that broader genomic context, how things interact over long distances. Ah, I see. So you lose the forest for the trees, kind of? You got it. Alpha Genome really break that limitation. It handles a huge input, one megabase of DNA. That's a million base pairs. A million, wow. Yeah, and at the same time, it gives you predictions at single base pair resolution. So it's like having that perfect microscope-wide view and super high zoom simultaneously. That's a great way to put it. And uh, it gets even better. The scope is just unprecedented. Yeah, simultaneously good. predicts thousands of these functional genomic tracks. Thousands. Yeah, across 11 different types of data, these modalities, we're talking gene expression, RNA-seq, cage, that sort of thing, chromatin accessibility like DNA-seq, ATAC-seq, histone modifications, transcription factor binding. Okay, so all the different ways the cell actually uses the DNA code. Exactly. Even 3D chromatin structure like high c and really detailed splicing patterns. It's seeing how all these layers connect. That integrated view must be powerful. Immensely. Yeah. And the results back it up. Alpha Chino matches or uh, even beats the best specialized models out there on like 24 out of 26 tests for predicting variant effects. Okay, that's impressive validation. So let's bring this back to the listener. What does this actually mean for you? Well, think about this. Over 98% of the genetic differences between people are in non-coding DNA. Right, that vast majority that doesn't directly make proteins. And figuring out what those non-coding variants do has been incredibly hard, almost, you know, intractable sometimes. Alpha Genome gives us the tools to finally interpret them. Yeah, and that raises the key question. How did these subtle changes actually affect our biology? One huge thing Alpha Genome does is predict splicing really comprehensively. Like Splicing, that's how the RNA gets processed, right? Cutting bits out. Exactly. And it's complex. Alpha Genome is the first single system to predict all three levels. Where the splice sites are, how much each site is used, and the specific junctions created. Plus, it predicts the direct RNA set coverage. It gives you this whole picture. Like a real world example. Sure. It actually predicted uh, really accurately this known case where a tiny four base pair deletion near the Tau1 oncogene causes exon skipping. And Tau1 is linked to certain cancers, right? Correct. So predicting that kind of effect from sequence alone is huge. Okay, so this improved understanding. It must have big implications for research, maybe even medicine. Oh, definitely. It massively improves predicting EQTL effects. Right. EQTL's variance affecting gene expression levels. Yeah. It predicts not just if there's an effect, but the magnitude and the direction does it increase or decrease expression. This really helps make sense of GW's results. Genome-wide association studies looking for disease links. Yep. Especially for those low-frequency variants that are often hard to study. Makes sense. And it's state-of-the-art for enhancer gene linking, too. Figuring out which enhancers control which genes, even if they're far away in the DNA. It's much better than older models, especially for enhancers more than, say, 10,000 base pairs away from the gene start site. That long-range stuff is notoriously tricky. It is. But maybe the most unique thing is the multimodal analysis. In one single run, it scores how a variant impacts all those different data types we talked about. Ah, so you see the ripple effect across different molecular layers. Precisely. They showed this with those Tau1 variants again. It didn't just show increased gene expression, but also the corresponding changes in activating histone marks, and even predicted the creation of new binding sites for other proteins, like MYB. It connects all the dots. So how does it actually do all this? What's under the hood? Well, the architecture is based on something called a UNAT. 
It uses um, convolutional layers for local patterns, you know, spotting small sequence motifs. And then uses transformer blocks, yeah, like in language models, to capture those longer range dependencies. Think enhancer promoter loops. Clever combination. And training this must be intense. Oh, yeah. Trained on human and mouse genomes. Getting that base pair resolution over the full megabase sequence needed some serious hardware. They used parallel processing across eight TPUs. Google's tensor processing units. Powerful stuff. Definitely. And they used this technique called distillation to create a single efficient model that performs as well as, or sometimes better than, combining several different models. It really shows the power of learning from all those diverse data types together. Okay, so it's a major step forward, but are there still limitations, things it can't do yet? For sure. Like all current sequence models, really nailing the influence of very distant elements, like beyond 100,000 base pairs, is still tough. That's an ongoing challenge. Right. And while it predicts tissue-specific patterns, getting it perfectly right across all cell types, or predicting how variants might act only under specific conditions, like during an immune response, that's still very complex. And it's mainly human and mouse for now. Primarily, yes. Yeah. And it's focused on predicting the molecular consequences of variance changes in RNA, chromatin, etc. Not predicting the final complex trait, like risk for diabetes, which involves way more than just DNA sequence, environment matters, other biological pathways. Understood. It's a powerful tool for a specific crucial part of the puzzle. Exactly. So thinking about this, alpha genome's ability to predict these precise molecular consequences just from DNA sequence it feels transformative. How do you think this might reshape things like personalized medicine or genetic diagnostics, maybe even basic biology research in your field? It really opens up new possibilities, doesn't it? It really does. The potential is enormous. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into alpha genome here on the SANS Science Experience. Fascinating stuff. Remember, if you found this interesting, please like this deep dive and definitely subscribe to the SANS Science Experience for more breakdowns of cutting-edge science. We'll see you next time.